All right. Hey there, everyone. My name is Atesh, and welcome back to the Git series, and welcome to the third part of it, or the third video. So in this video, we're going to be again going back. We'll do some of the practicals. We'll go some of the behind the scene again, one more time. This one is going to be a little bit more of a practical, tiny bit theory, and we're going to have some fun. So let me share the screen first and, and uh, let me walk you through that what we are going to do in this video. So the whole idea is to understand this part of the system first, because obviously we will be going into the Git push and GitHub and all these things later on. But first of all, it is important for us that we understand this part of the thing. This is pretty nice, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a working directory. Uh, we're going to go ahead and work on the git add command. We'll go through the little bit details of it. We'll see what this staging area is, and then we're, we're going to walk through with the commit, and we'll see how a repo or the repository or the folder looks like. And then we're going to have a lot more discussion about the commits or how this is being done. In order to walk through with this, again, we are still here. And if you just go ahead and look into uh, the pwd command present working directory, we are in the git one. And at this point, we can just go ahead and check out the git status. This is the first command that you should always and always run in every folder to check out whether this is already initialized with the git or we need to do some initialization. Once you do this, if you see something like this on branch master, uh, one side note, you will always and always be on some or the other branch. That branch is called as master, main, checkout, feature, whatever the name but you'll always be on some of the branch. In this case, we are on the master branch. There is a little bit history involved with that as well. I'll walk you through with that. Uh, but we are on this one. Now, I've opened this folder in the VS Code. As you can see on the top, this is git1. So this exact folder is opened up here so that we can work on and see the visualization of this. Now, also, I do recommend you to install one plugin, which is known as git lens. And what this folder is going to do is it will allow you to have uh, this is a small icon at the top, and once you click on this, this will give you some of the graphs. Right now, we don't have this one. Uh, we don't have any comment or anything. That's why it's giving us error. That's okay. That's expected. Uh, but it's good. It's good to have this uh, simple plugin. Again, I repeat it, git lens. Pretty easy. Okay. Now, let's see what we're going to do here. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to create a couple of files and folders here. So, let's just go ahead and use touch. And what we're going to do is, uh, let's just call this one as test1. Let's go with the TXT, plain and old simple. And we're going to also go ahead and say test2, of course, .txt. We'll go through with the HTML files later on. These are also fun. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and have these files. The moment I have these files, now you can see these two files are here. If you want to see the visual aspect, yes, these two files are here as well. Uh, so go ahead and click them. I prefer the terminal part. Now let's go ahead and see what does the git status says now. Okay. So the git status is giving us different results now. It is giving us untracked files and nothing to be committed. So what it's saying is basically that, hey, I am initialized in this repository, but there are some of the files which are not in my tracking zone yet. So if you make any changes or anything in these files, I'm not unaware of it and I'm not also keeping track of them. They are out of my tracking zone as of now. So where we are right now, so uh, the whole idea behind this entire thing is that whole thing is whenever you build any software, you write some code, you add that code into the Git tracking zone, and then you make it a commit. So what we have done so far is we have just a working directory in which we have created some of the files, and that's it. We, are, we have done nothing else. Now the next step here, according to our flow, is to use the command git add. Git add command uh, does nothing magical. It just keeps everything under the tracked zone. Let's just say for some reason, I want the test one to be tracked. Test two, I'm still working on it. I'm not yet ready to make it trackable yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the command git add. And you will constantly see that a lot of people just add the dot here and that's it. Uh, this is, if this is intentional, that's great. But a lot of time, this is not intentional. The whole idea behind add is to move into the staging area. And this is where you should only name the file which you are interested in tracking. And by the way, you can add multiple files just by putting up a space. But in this case, I just want to track one file. I'm not interested in tracking all the files. Let's see what happens. When I go ahead and hit an enter, now nothing magic. But again, our magical command, which is git status, just go ahead and run this. And now we see the message to be a little bit different. Let's go ahead and work through with this. It says, you are on still on branch master. Okay, that's good. 
Now changes to be committed. That means I'm tracking one file which is new file which is test one and there is also still one untracked file which I'm not tracking on this. So at this point just by adding this command that means you're on the staging area. Staging area is an intermediate zone before you make any commit. So it's almost like uh, a pre-screen before you save your game. Sometimes it happens that uh, do you really want to save the game? Press yes. Yes, this is exactly that area. You can stage the file. You can unstage the file as well. By the way, you might have seen the commands here that yes, uh, you can do the unstage as well. Uh, git rm dash dash cached and the, the file name. Uh, you can unstage them. We will talk about them later on, but usually nobody un untracks them, but it's it's possible. So right now we are in the position that we are in the staging area. All right, we got it. We are on the screen where we can hit the save button or we can say no button. What's the next hit? The next command is to use is the git commit. Okay, repeating again, working directory, added some file, ask that you track this file. Now we are in the staging area. Now we need to do the commit. Now the commit command in itself is a little bit tricky to understand. In order to do so, I can just go ahead and simply say, hey, I'm ready to commit. So I can just go ahead and hit the commit. Now the problem with the commit command is that, uh, I'll walk you through in that in the next one, that this can be a little bit tricky to work on with. So always it is recommended that you press dash M to give a message. Commit needs a message. 100% of the time they need some message that, hey, why are you committing this file? what this zone is or what this file does. And even there's a debate what and how you should write these commit message. We'll definitely go with that. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, add file one. That's it, that's my command to the code base that, hey, do this one. Okay, once I do this, it does some of the stuff and it says master root, blah, blah, blah stuff. One file changed, zero insertion, zero deletion, and all these stuff. So where we are right now in the in the diagram perspective, we have gone through with this command and we learned that just running alone git commit is not enough. We need to run git commit dash m to give a message and then we have to provide a one-liner message. We'll discuss about them. But definitely we are in this repo stage right now. So if you go ahead and work on with this, so if you go ahead and check out uh, git status again. So if I run the git status again, it says, you know what? There is only one file which I'm not, which I'm worried about, which is test two, because test one, hey, that's already in the repo. That has gone into the repo zone. That means everything is being tracked and everything is updated in that file. Nothing is changed from last I checked onto it. Uh, that's nice. Now let's do this exercise one more time, but with little bit error messages so that we can see what happens when things goes wrong. By the way, now if you have installed the git lens, it will give you some of the options that, hey, you have created something here. So this is a single line of, you can say timeline that has gone and it gives me all these things, author messages. It will not give this exact same thing to you as of now, because yes, right now you are not gonna be getting all these uh, nice author name, a commit you will get, but this author name is definitely going to bother you. I'll show you why you are getting these error messages, why I'm not getting them. So yes, you are in trouble already, but these are the problems we really want to face to understand what goes wrong and what is all the things goes on behind the scene onto that. All right, so first of all, let's go ahead and do the same thing again, but with the test two file. So the first step is simply go ahead and what we want to do is add. So let's go ahead and add, and this time I want to add a test two file. All right, that looks good. That has been done in the past as well. And we can use the shortcut dot here as well because there's just one file to track. I go ahead and hit that. Now the next step is to obviously, now I'm in staging area. You can just verify that by git status. Yes, I'm in the staging area. The next step is to commit it. But this time, instead of running uh, the dash M, I'll just go ahead and remove this and see what happens when I don't do anything like this. So if I go ahead and run git commit and I hit enter, Oh, it opens up VS Code for me, but it doesn't open VS Code for you. Why this is happening? I can write my message here. I can just go ahead and say uh, my second file or add second file to code base. I can just go ahead and save this and I can just simply close this file and I can go back and you can see it does work for me. But in your case, it might have opened up something in the terminal itself. Why didn't it open it up for me? What I what did I change in there? That's exactly what you want to learn. Because by default, whenever you make any commit message, 
it opens up a whim and that's a little bit scary of a code editor. By the way, in case you are stuck with it, press escape once, then the colon and then the Q. You will be quit with that. In case it doesn't quit it, then simply press Q and then the exclamatory sign, it will forcefully quit that out. Uh, but yes, nobody wants to get stuck with the whim, especially when you are getting started, you are a beginner. Uh, so yes, we'll discuss all these things about. Okay, let's move back. So we have done all of this, so we can go ahead and see that, okay, uh, we can just remove this and start it again. We can see that the second file add to the code base. So there are two commits now which I have done. Okay, good start, good start. Let's go ahead and talk about this. Uh, now it's time that we discuss what happened behind the scene as well as why did it give you an error of username as well as why it didn't give it to me. Why did it open up the code editor as Vim for you, not for me? So these are the important questions we need to discuss. Uh, first of all, a little stage area that we have discussed. So whenever we do a git initialization, that's the start of our software, that start keep track of it. Then simply go ahead and create files, whatever the file syntax and everything are there. You can just use files like git add file one and file two, or optionally you can use git add dot. Dot simply means here that add everything that I have, no matter what sensitive files are, not sensitive files, just add everything. Then we, when we simply go ahead and check the git status, it gave me a status report that what files are being under the tracking zone, what files are untracked. Based on that, we learned about the git commit message and we saw that the git dash m is really important to provide a message. Most of the programmers and the coders, you'll find that they give the message directly within the command line. They don't wait for the code editor to open, whether that's a Vim or the VS Code. So, say simply, so, say, so they simply get the message of dash M and provide a good message. There's a big debate about the message as well, which we are going to talk about this. And then the git status. I highly, highly recommend that whoever is learning, repeat this two, three times. Create more files and do this flow. It will be super, super important for you. The next command that we're gonna go through is git log, and we are gonna go through quite in depth of it, but right now let's just see what happens when we go ahead. Logs are pretty important for software developers, so we're gonna go ahead and say git log. And please ignore the dash dash online, so no, we are not gonna be making this yet. I'll show you the demo of that one as well. So when I do a git log, uh, notice here it gives me so much of the details. It gives me the commit ID, so yes, we can notice that each commit that I made, uh, we saw that programmatically and the visual part that it has a commit ID. So if I go ahead and move this a little bit here and this one also here and this one again here, we can see there is a commit ID. But on the GUI, you are going to notice that it gives me a shorter ID, but on the other hand, here is the big ID. But notice here something interesting that this is 4C8A something and here also it is 4C8A. So only a few initial letters, usually six or eight uh, letters, are enough to make the Git unique for your repository, but hey, nothing is stopping you from uh, referencing and checking the whole one. It also gives us some details that, hey, this is the user who actually made this commit, and this is the email ID of this user. This is my public email ID. I don't use it for uh, the professional use. And also it gives me the date and all these things and the commit message that I made. So all these details are there. But the bigger question is, how did it came to know about that my name is this and this is my email ID? It's simply because there is a config file or also known as configuration file which in which all these information needs to be saved first so that we can make all these commits and messages. So we're going to do that in a minute. But there is also one more command that you just saw that there is also a command dash dash online and that's why I love this command line editor. It gives me so much of the details that I can just run this. And this times, yes, I get exactly the same, but it's shorter and it's in one line. It just gives me the message, which is the unique SHA, or you can say just unique letters, which makes my commit unique. And it gives me the unique message. And yes, we're gonna study about the headmaster a little bit later, but yes, this is all what we got. All right, so let's move up here. And we're gonna talk about this. Uh, we're gonna talk about the config files and all these, but first of all, let's talk about the commit message as well. On the internet, there's a big debate about it and everybody has their own opinion. I'm going to tell you the opinion which the official founders and official website actually mentions and I also follow that. So here it is. So Git actually follows a principle of atomic commits. That simply means that one commit does the one job. It's not like you do thousand different things and then make a commit. Uh, you do often commits and you do one task at a time with the commits. That's the whole idea behind atomicity or atomic commits one thing at a time. So here is this, keep commits, keep commits centric to one feature, one component or one fix. If you're fixing bugs, 
Uh, maybe there are 10 bugs you're fixing. So one commit, one bug. That's usually the idea behind all the major MNCs where you'll be working very soon, hopefully. So focus on one thing. That's the whole idea. Now, there is a big debate about when we write the commit message. How do you want to write the commit message? I can write uh, added one file to the code base or I can simply say add one file to code base. And there is a big debate about this one as well that whether to use a present or the past commit message. Now, it totally depends on uh, how you want to go with that. The official website or the official recommendation is simply uh, use the present tense but imperative. That means, simple idea is, give order to your code base. Hey, code base, do this. Hey, code base, add this file. Hey, code base, add this changes to my file. Hey, code base, add a function to connect to database. So that's the whole idea. Give order to your code base. Uh, I'm not super happy with this style. It looks too aggressive, but hey, I'm not making the rule. I simply don't care how much your messages you're giving or all these things details. Uh, but the whole idea is that, yes, you have to, you are supposed to give command to your code base. Now, one more thing that we're going to do in the next video is understand about this one. So what this whole thing is that uh, how does the git commit and all these uh, things works. In the next video, we're going to work with the git config command and we're going to see that how it came to know about me and my username, which I've used, as well as uh, how it came to know about my email ID and what is this configuration file. Let's go ahead, move on to the next video and talk about the configuration files.